Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Legend of the Traveling Tardis. My name is Christian Basil. I am the showrunner and host of what's going to be taking place today. As you all may know, if you've been uh, traveling with us for the past couple of weeks, we're moving forward to the 60th anniversary. But for us, we're going to go back, back to the beginning of where it all started in 2005. And uh, that's the wrong banner, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. I, I was, was curious. <laughs> I'm like, it seems wrong. Here and that is that's what it is. Um, <laughs> Hang never, on a second. Never put that. So here, we'll just we'll, 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 let's just, just get. That's the wrong. It really is. is. Um, I wanted to say something, but I'm like, it probably would. There be we go. Do <laughs> <laughs> that, and then we come over here, and we'll just take that. Get get rid of that. There we go. Wait, wait, wait! No, 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 no! Wait, wait. Uh, that's the right one. That's the right one. I'll get rid of that banner. I'm adding this on. Yeah, trust me, we're 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 yes. professionals here. We are totally professionals. <laughs> we're professionals. I just forgot to take that. Yeah. My yeah, bad. It, Tom mentioned it, and I didn't realize what he was saying. He mentioned it in the private chat there, I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. No, that's what are we talking about here? Yes, today we are going to be reviewing. As he fixes all that. Good evening. Got the air fresh. Got a fan ready for this episode. Is there you else? go. Thank you for, uh, we were having some uh, microphone delays, and I think Melly had to dip out for just a little bit. I'm hoping she'll be back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Legend of the Traveling TARDIS, and we've got a special guest today, and we will be going over to your chat, so make sure that you're chatting. Today, as we move forward towards the 60th anniversary, we head back, taking The Traveling TARDIS back for our two-parter special, the review of Aliens of London and World War III. We are going to be visiting these two episodes together. As you remember them, they uh, introduced us to uh, Raxacorical Fallopatorius, which I've taken some time to get that straightened out. So finally I got in and said, and the Slovene. And I did not know that uh, people get this a bit wrong. And if anybody wants to correct me on this, it's Raxacorical Fallopatorian. That's what the creatures are. The Raxacorical Fallopatorian. The family is Slovene. Yes. Yes, so that's where we got a little bit on the mix-up out there. Speaking of mix-up, let's go ahead and bring in our team of celebrities today who are going to be helping us rate. And don't forget, you're rating too. This is all interactive, so we want you to be part of the legend. We want you to be rating this as well. So everybody into the chat, say hi there. Um, thank you for joining us, and thank you again for so much for your patience while we were trying to get the audio stuff, and apparently the thumbnail taken care of, so uh, without further ado, yeah, that was a little embarrassing. Just a wee bit embarrassing. Oh, got some noise going on out there, so hang on just a second um, as we continue to take care of things. Hello, everybody. Let me go ahead and introduce the team. Let's go ahead and start off with uh, the man himself, Dave Chapman. From the rathole.ca, and you've got something going on today, and I guess we'll be seeing a little bit of a video later on. Mr. You, Chapman, you, how you doing? Put that up whenever you like, Chris. Okay. But we got uh, a now. I am in uh, at the Gamma Expo. It's the uh, Game Manufacturers Association. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, I was here and kind of pulled in. A, we were doing the episode on Would You Rather Be the Doctor or the Companion? And I pulled oh. in the publishers. This year, they've set up a media studio up away from the show floor partly because the show <laughs> floor opened about an hour ago so it is crazy busy down there oh wow a little quieter up here um a little bit farther away but we've got a nice background i got a nice uh light and uh yeah last night was the uh the announcements of the origin awards and these are a, a variety of awards given out by the by gamma um and the new one is for reviews Okay, and, cool. Uh, so, might as well do that now because we've got there. I must review this. Support Game Quest by Mind Ninja Review. Grant Game Quest by Grant's Greatest Games in the Park River. Grant Game Quest, the best of fortune game. Go get a wise on that one. The Rat Hole.ca, Doctors and Dallas, the Hellers Guide Review. The Rat Hole by CA, Doctor Who, the role playing game. Oh, friendly, we're So, yeah, apparently I'm going to or Origins now. That's in uh, Columbus, Ohio in June. Cool. Uh, I've gone a few times, and, I, and I, it's extra. I'm extra happy to have uh, our special guest on there. Um, oh, there we go. Nick. Uh, <laughs> 
those, both of those reviews that I'm, I'm nominated for also ran in his magazine as well as on the ratholeca um, Both of those are, are source books from Cubicle 7 games. And uh, so that's extremely exciting for me. I The, the imposter syndrome is strong. And uh, yeah, I'll shut up and let someone else talk now. Okay, well, without, without further ado, that's a nice little segue out there. Speaking of which, uh, let's bring in some folks we haven't seen in quite some time. We've got the lovely Mackenzie Floor. How are you doing, Mackenzie, for the Red Wands? Yes, and, and um, now also from XLG. I am a part of the XLG stream team. So we've got something, some uh, zero in the chat. So, no. Hello there. <laughs> I see the uh, zero. Now, what does that mean for people who are not much of a, the Twitch followers? What does that exactly so, mean? Well, we are a community by gamers for gamers. So definitely anybody that would like to join us are definitely welcome to it. We do have like a street team that specifically goes on Twitch. But outside, we have a community in Discord where we talk all about games and we would love to have anybody in there we have actual channels for specific games so like those reviews that dave is talking about he can even have his own channel where he plows in his uh reviews in there it's just more and more people are welcome absolutely and that's kind of where i've been i, I went kind of like a wall for a while that's where i've been i've been trying to build myself yeah whatever whatever <laughs> I see how it is. We get you up, <laughs> we get you to your status, we get you there, and it's like, yeah, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Doctor Who podcast, whatever nonsense. Out there. But speaking of which, speaking of which, uh, twitch.tv slash Mackenzie Floor for the folks who are listening on our audio. Uh, just in case you need the spelling, M A C K E N Z I E F O O H R. Don't mop the floor, please. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> Speaking of which, that's a great transfer to the see the Reverend Amagon <laughs> better known as Tom Cook, the hashtag guru. <laughs> okay. I got it. I got it. I got uh, it. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, How are you Lord. doing, Reverend? Hello there. It's your boy, Tasty Cake. And because I follow Mackenzie <laughs> all the time, not literally, but on her Twitch channel, I dyed my hair red as well. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's just a coincidence. Anyway. Lights and shiny out there. Don't forget to check out the good Reverend, or better known as Tom Kosak, on the Rebs, Raves, and Rants on the YouTube channel. You can follow him out there as well. It's good to see Mackenzie and, uh, and Melanie once again. That is a great segue. <laughs> <laughs> Ta -da! There you go. She's back. She's back. back. I'm back. Um, I'm back. Know, Both. She's back. She's bad. And StreamYard's got her. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Um. Well, I'm I'm back, and I'm back before you know. Once we went live, I disappeared because the wonderful people from the Hanging with Web Show, Sage and Garrett, um, they helped me get my uh get be able to get into here in the the admin section, so that way I can help out. With oh, comments. Cool. That's okay. why I disappeared quickly, but I'm back. So I wasn't sure how much everybody noticed online, but uh, ta -da. But yes, I'm also back from. Um, London. I'm back from MegaCon Orlando. I'm, Star Wars. Star Wars I'm back from all the so, Star Wars celebration. Um, so yes, uh, here I am. It's just I, and I'm still trying to decompress and get ready for you know, as, as you know, how you take a vacation from work and then you're like, oh, this is wonderful, it's great, and then you get back and you're like, okay, here's all the stuff waiting for me, and it just negated all of it. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of Still playing catch up a little bit, but I still. know you need a vacation from your vacation from your vacation at work, and then some more time. Yeah. How well? How was it? How was Star Wars Celebration? Oh, it was amazing. It was and I'm absolutely... sorry, I'm sorry. MegaCon was just a just really went whack out over there, and it was just like, geez. But it gave us a chance to take Dave and the traveling Tardis to to actual Canada. I don't yeah. know if you got to see those videos that Dave actual got. Actual Canada. Actual. <laughs> <laughs> at Epcot. Epcot. At the uh, did, did you get to see the ratings on what Dave uh, mentioned about Epcot Canada versus Canada Canada? Well, I mean, that's like trying to say the U.S. Pavilion from somebody that's from Arizona. It's very specific to yeah. what they. You only have a little footprint, so so I get why he, you know, he rated what he rated, but it's also kind of dependent on what what the theme is. So, 
He wasn't. I don't good. know. I actually, liked... I know other Canadians that loved it. So, sorry, King of Canada, Dave Chapman. He, he, he <laughs> didn't like the Pavilion, but he liked the movie. That that, yeah. that was I was just that's because that's, that's because my, Martin Andy. Short is a is a treasure. It's not Martin Short anymore. It's not Martin Short. Not... How dare? New, completely new. Yeah, it's completely Easy different. Muggy and uh, uh, lady. Name it's, a, just, it's a guy and a woman who are narrating. They sound. I like finally it. got my pass. So Disney had finally opened up passes again after mm -hmm. COVID. Um, they had put a little bit of a uh, cancellation on um, renewing passes, if if or mm -hmm. getting new passes. So if you had, if like during COVID, you were like, ah, I'm just gonna let my my, my annual pass renew. Uh, I'm not not renew it. Um, you know, ellipse or eclipse rather. Um, like myself, we've been we've been waiting for passes to open up again. So finally, I can I can go back to the land of the mouse and see all the things I haven't seen in, in quite some time. Come on, Tron! I want to go on the Tron coaster. And you know what's interesting is that if you if you if you really think about, it, I know Dave's not aware of it, but if you watch the video, the Canadian video, it reminds me, it harkens me back, and tell me if I'm wrong if you get a chance to see it, to the bickering couple in Horizons. If you remember those two. I never saw Horizons. You never saw Horizons? No, it's even okay. though even though I'm a Florida native, I did not see. I did not go to uh, Disney until I was 19. So, oh okay, 99 is when I went to Disney. So there was a lot of stuff that oh. a lot of that I I wasn't there for Orange Bird and Horizons and all that kind of fun stuff. So, oh. you know, well, unfortunately, I, I do not understand that. I do not get to that reference. I'm sure you could find like the YouTube video on on. Uh, you know the the ride itself out there, but mm -hmm. without further ado, last but not least, we're bringing in our special guest, Mr. Nick Smith, bestseller, author, actor, filmmaker, and editor of the Cosmic Mask. And if you guys have been lucky enough, you've seen Dave and I actually contribute to the Cosmic Mask. How you doing, Mr. Mr. Smith? Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. And yeah, Christian and Dave, you've written amazing articles for Cosmic Mask. It's uh, one of the Doctor Who Appreciation Society's zines. You can read it for free online. And we have nonfiction, we have fiction, and lots of stuff about games. We love covering games. So, um, yeah, that's been a joy to, to find out more. Um, I've been a fan since I was three or four years old. I'm originally from Bristol, England. And um, so I grew up with it. My grandfather, grandparents loved the show. My parents loved the show. So it's kind of in my blood, family of blood. There we go. <laughs> Who, who's your doctor? Um, who, who is your doctor? Oh, what's that? Who's your doctor? My doctor is Patrick Troughton. Woo, gotcha. That's awesome. Because everyone awesome. usually goes either like the, the four or ten, depending if they want to go new who or old who. And you and you, and you going with Troughton is really pretty cool. Well, at least also he it shows that... Mine. You didn't grow up like stateside in the eighties, where we only had four. That was it. So, pretty cool. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, thank. I can just watch him anytime. He gives me joy—the kind of joy that um, that we see in the Ninth Doctor in these stories. Hello, Catherine. Actually, just that excitement of being alive and exploring. Mm -hmm. Oh, is uh, Catherine responding to mine too? As far as the Second Doctor. Awesome. All yes. righty. Well, let's go ahead and bring the team in. And thank you again, everybody, for joining us. Uh, just a reminder, we are going to be reviewing uh, two episodes that were back-to-back -back, uh, during the 2005 run. And if I'm not mistaken, let me... Um, first broadcast on uh, April the 16th, uh, 2005. So, wow, it's um, not too far away. Just uh, about nine days ago that this uh, particular episode broadcast, this two-part episode... Uh, we call the aliens of London. I don't know why when I was writing stuff down for it, I called it AOL <laughs> well, and world war three, which is the two parter. Yep. Well, that brought us, uh, yeah, I guess we can say it. The farting aliens. Uh, that's, that's <coughs> if you're not familiar with how we review things, this is how we're going to be doing it. I'll be asking our panelists, uh, to give us some numbers, and then we're going to go to a commercial break, and then we'll be going to each individual panelist. Again, we put this in a two-split parter, so they're going to give me numbers for uh, Aliens of London as well as World War III. The lowest person is going to get to start first. One with the highest number gets to go last, and because I'm the showrunner, discretion, I'll probably be at the end of that time is allotted. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get the numbers out there. Let's go ahead and start off with our special guest. 
we've got Nick Smith. Nick, what would you rate? And this is just going to be split. Aliens of London and World War Three. Okay, Aliens of London, seven out of ten, and World War Three, six out of ten. Six out of ten. So seven and six on there. Dave, you're at next up for bids. Got it. What would you rate Aliens, and what would you rate uh, World War Three? Six across the board. Six across the board. Okay. Little dip on down there. You're trying to go first, aren't you? Mackenzie <laughs> Floor. Mackenzie Floor. Uh, Aliens of London, World War Three. What would you rate them? Straight sevens across the board. <laughs> Straight sevens across the board. Uh, the lovely Melanie Dean, what would you rate our two episodes? I had said eights across the board, but I'm lying because I just uh -oh. want to go last. <laughs> 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 if anybody has watched the oh, show long enough, they know what my rating really is. So, God. <laughs> I'm playing always. your game, Christian. I'm on to you. And last but not least, definitely the Reverend Amagon. Tom, how would you rate? Don't Same you go, Mackenzie? Seven and seven. Seven and seven. Mm -hmm. So, without further ado, with the tally numbers that we got from everybody, the lowest score will be starting off our reviews over there and who was the lowest score well you're gonna have to wait until the commercial break when we return we're gonna start our review of aliens of london as well <laughs> yeah melanie she just wanted to go last uh, aliens of go. london as well as uh world war three return please continue to stay logged on tuned in we'll be right back <laughs> We are a touring acoustic duo crashing kitchens around the country. We go from house to house every Friday night and we create music, we create food, a good time, we stream it live and we do it for free. So now we're just really kind of like trying to develop it and build a community group that people believe in, then they'll help us. So we played from our rehearsal room, we played from the bathroom, thankfully that didn't catch on. I probably played guitar in my room, not for anyone, in front of anyone, nobody heard, for probably about 10 years. And then one Friday night, we played from the kitchen. It's the main place people wanna be. It's where the food is, it's where the drink is, it's where the best lighting is. You can go to any party and I guarantee you, the kitchen is gonna be popping. Our ultimate goal, I think would be to crash kitchens every Friday all around the world. Meet the doctor. I'm the doctor. But not the one you were expecting. All right, sexy. It's time to go home. Doctor Who Velocity, streaming now. Oh, brilliant. It's hard to believe that in the 56 year history of the greatest sci-fi television show in the English language, there has never been a fan guide to Doctor Who. The official books might give you what they think you need to know, but only a guide written by a true fan will give you what you really want to know. Join Whovian, the brilliant Mackenzie Floor as she takes you on an intensive journey inside the world of the first female Doctor. In the Binge Watcher's Guide to Doctor Who, Season 11. Right, let's get a shift on. Don't jinx it, Dan. <laughs> God, this is... <laughs> the buttons seem to be not so sticky this time around. And then I got to McKenzie's commercial, and then it went... Uh, so, like, dang it, don't jinx it out there. Hey, though, for, though, for those of you just joining us, welcome to Legend of the Traveling TARDIS. Today, as we move forward towards the 60th anniversary, we're heading back towards Christopher Eccleston's time as the Doctor, reviewing 
Aliens of London and World War III. We just did the ratings for there. So I'm um, here with the lovely Dave Chapman, Melanie Dean. I'm here with a special guest, Nick Smith, Mackenzie Floor, and the Reverend Amagon in the far corner out there. Of course, we are going to be starting with the lowest number, and Dave gave the lowest number with a total of 12 on those two episodes. So, Dave, you're going to start off the review. You rated uh, 6 and 6. Tell the, us a the spoken lowest. Spoken lowest. The actual lowest. They're going to be the lowest, but you know, or did you just want to go first, like Melanie wanted to go last? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, that, that's totally it. No, it's not. At all. Talk to us about it, Dave. What what went wrong? What what was the good stuff? The bad stuff? The good, bad, and the farty? I mean, the, yeah, I was gonna say everyone is gonna bring it up, but the fart jokes were excessive. I don't actually object with that it happened. They just were excessive. Yes, unnecessarily so. But I understand what they were going for. They were going for a little bit of the. The humor they wanted a little bit of the the goofy that you got from the original series um was leading it in the costume version i actually really like it's goofy rubber suit guys and i like goofy rubber suit guys i hate you mark um, <laughs> stop it um no i really do like the, the rubber suit but then they interspersed a couple points in there with some cgi versions of them mm -hmm. that were completely different it'd be like you, you're watching an old 60s godzilla with the rubber suit and then they suddenly cut to a scene with with you know the magic yeah, water like different food yeah you're right about that you know i'm running i'm running i'm running and suddenly you've got this rawr, cgi version that just did not work um some of the characters are just kind of annoying in general it just it was it was not a strong episode i don't mind the care like i like them i like the family i like the concept i like the idea i like what they were going for it just, there were just little it was elements it was not as bad as i think melanie's going to say but i think it is really it's it's an average episode at best and i and i say episode singular cuz it's a two parter same diff um yeah i guess it's it there were some definitely important things i mean you get to see a little bit of the doctor's enthusiasm for why he does this and why he loves seeing things mm -hmm. you don't really understand, you know get the reference to why he does remember what actually happened um mo most things except that that's the hangover from the time time war basically but yeah, it just and there wasn't a lot. Yeah, there just wasn't a lot, and it's it is a time frame that the Doctor at that point in real life had not visited very often. Right. Um, I mean, there was only two or three times that he had visited the '90s at all, including the Eighth Doctor movie. But the, the, I think the second Doctor did it once, and the uh, second and seventh, I think, did did shows that were supposedly in the '90s. But the time war kind of fluttered everything else up. <laughs> wait, 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 what, what was that? The slap was best. Which one was that? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I will. I will accept that. Uh, that Jackie's Jackie's slapping the doctor was 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 something else as well. But honestly, I just don't like her character. She's annoying. But I also have to admit that Jackie is. There was a lot of emotion in those scene in those initial scenes. You know, there was something visceral about the. Where the heck has my daughter been for the last year? I'm terrified because she was just gone. Like I, there, there is definitely those. As much as I dislike her character, that was a really poignant moment in the in the show, not just those episodes. But all the good and all the bad just kind of even out to average. And that was the future's nineties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it, it, the episode, and the series is just starting out. Exactly. And it's very odd that the third episode and all this was going to, uh, well, actually, I'm sorry, the four, the fourth and the fifth episode was going to be about farting aliens, and I'm just like, why would Russell T want to go in this direction? Why would anybody want to take a chance and go into that direction? But I wonder if it wasn't written as like episodes two, three, because it was definitely, you know, like I didn't like Rose. For the same reason, I, I just didn't like what they were doing with the Autons. I didn't like the Rotten Robbie version of, of Mickey. I, I just, you know, it was a, it has similar vibe for me. 
Um, so I'm wondering if that it's just a matter of, and again, as you said, it's just restarting. They were still trying to get there, find their, their space, find that happy medium between what had come before and what they might possibly, because they're not sure, want to do with it. Gotcha. All righty. Well, Dave, thank you so much. Thank you for your input on that. That was awesome, the, the brother. Uh, the next person with the lowest score happens to be our special guest, Nick, with a 13 total. <laughs> uh, seven and six is what you gave it. Tell us about those two episodes. Where did it work? Where didn't it work? And what would you do to improve it? If this is the case? There's a lot to say about these stories, but definitely the show's finding its feet. Um, it's trying to catch our attention. It's bubblegum who. We've got all these bright colors, almost over the top characters, the bug eyed monsters. And you're saying, hey, look at this, have fun with it, enjoy it. And it works on that level. I gave Aliens of London a little bit higher score because of the cliffhanger. Very exciting to have a cliffhanger, you know, with these 45 minute episode chunks. We get our classic cliffhanger uh, with a triple threat. So we've got mm -hmm. three different kind of problems that need to be solved. So that's, you know, very exciting just to show the possibilities of that. You know, we don't just have to have one-off stories. We can have multiple and more complex stories as a result. And talking of complexity, we've got the family elements as well. We right. see the doctor in a domestic environment, you know, uh, with the whole family around him, a human family, and he's not comfortable. That kind of sets things up for later episodes like The Lodger, where he's trying to fit in with humans. But also we've got the Slithine family too. We've got this uh, these aliens who don't just want to invade. They have a different uh, dynamic. They kind of bicker with each other. They care mm -hmm. about each other a little bit. And they want to make money. So uh, there's definitely, they're trying to do something different with that. Um, I did really like the fact that Rose has been missing for a year how much the mom cares. It gives Jackie something to do and it creates some great dramatic conflict at the start of the story. The effects are wobbly. They're more like a kid's show, like my headmaster is an alien, that kind of thing. And I definitely see those layers. You know, we've got the farting for the kids, you know, right. the baby face monsters, but also we've got those more um, complex levels for grown ups. And that's why you can watch the story more than once and get more out of it. But overall, it just seems really hyper real, especially when they're on the rooftop. You know, the sky behind them doesn't look quite right. And are they really on the rooftop? It does feel like um, almost like they're, they're going beyond reality. And then they kind of play with that, with the pig in space. Pigs in space. They have yes. Them. Mm. They've got a spaceship crashing. So really, they're playing with what we expect from a sci-fi story. And what they can actually, what they're able to produce mm -hmm. with the, the funds that they have. Yeah, we could tell that it wasn't, you know, a big budgeted production from the BBC. It was <laughs> what they had at that time. And of course, the story calls for what these monsters that, if you look at them, I agree with Dave, if you look at them, you see them in one scene where they're just like, ah, la, 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 la. and the next thing you see, they're CGI and they look like they could run 10 times faster. Then the ah, la, 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 going uh -huh. across the room, which I know what they were trying to do, but do you they think they couldn't match some... them up? Yeah, they couldn't match them up in there. But here's the thing I've always thought about this, especially revisiting this particular episode. Do you know. think it was intentionally meant to be this camp just to be silly to try to attract people? Or do you think like we we're just starting off? We know we're starting off. Or do you think it's a combination of both? I think it was playing with the fact that we, we knew Doctor Who might have ropey effects, or it might be a bit silly sometimes. Yeah, go with it. Have fun with yeah. it. Why not? But also saying that we can do a bit more. We can go beyond those expectations as well. Gotcha. Um, and, you know, just kind of placing it more in the real world. You know, I said the look of it is hyper real, but we've also got lots of details. I think uh, Mickey puts his trainers out on the balcony to air them off. Mm -hmm. at one point you know you see these little domestic moments people popping their head through the hatch to the kitchen reminds me of my nan she used to do that yeah um and you know references to 9 11 the weapons of mass destruction mm -hmm. um something crashing into big ben terrorist acts blowing up number 10 downing street 
It's really trying to, although it's silly and camp on the one hand, it's also rooted in the real world on the other. I love the neighbors who never are seen again. They, they were just like a big gathering. And then they just disappear, and we never see them ever again. Yeah. The kid who was like, uh, he, they're try, uh, the doctor's trying to watch the TV, and he's playing with the remote and jumping around. The doctor's trying to get the remote back. But yeah, I do, I do see the, the conflict where um, the doctor's trying to say he doesn't want to be domesticated, and here he goes. He's kind of forced into it, especially Jackie and, 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 uh, and Mickey are now making their way into the TARDIS now. Mm -hmm. So she, they're finally getting to see the reality of how the doctor affects them. But now they're also getting to the point of the danger that the doctor can be as well. And we're going to see that later in World War Three. But, you know, now we've got the warning signs of what it is to be in the doctor's world. We're seeing through Clive's eyes, back from Rose, you know, the doctor brings death with him wherever he goes, and uh, it's being exacerbated. Now it's leaked into Rose's world, where Jackie's involved, where Mickey's involved, and everybody else is kind of involved, and it's bled out as far as his influence into the real world. I mean, the, the crashing of the, of the spaceship coming down, and now it's in her world. And I do love the, I don't know why, uh, but there was kind of like, I wouldn't say I was... Uh, it, it, it turned me off from Rose, but there was one thing where she keeps thinking that, she, like when she was on um, the ship, she was on a, in the end of the world, that she was like the last human. And then she's walking around thinking, I'm bearing this burden that I know everything. And then all of a sudden the ship flies over and she goes, oh, that's so not fair. <laughs> and I don't know why it, it, it kind of turned me off. Is said, why would you think you're the only person who, who has seen this? But um that that's the only question that I had for that out there. Uh, all right, we got a little more time. So, without further ado, thank you, thank you so much, Nick. Because uh, <laughs> Melanie wanted to go last, <laughs> we could probably give her the whole end of the show out there. Um, let's get to the chats, actually. Rant. Yeah, the uh, Catherine, Jessica, and that office is. I like the term hyper real. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's get to the chats. I haven't even checked the chats. Like, like the red shirt. He's dead, Jim. Wait, wrong show. Nice. <laughs> Absolutely nice out there. Um, I've read the character who ended up being the Prime Minister, this Andrew Morris, and based on Boris Johnson, who was seen at the time yeah. as a silly figure. Now, I've, uh, before we get to... Um, you know, I'll have a uh, Mackenzie start it off over there. I noticed something about the. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna save it just in case Mackenzie brings it up. So I'll bring Mackenzie up since we got a two way tie, and we haven't seen her face in a while. We love her, Mackenzie Floor. You rated this uh, seven seven total fourteen. You were next up. You tied with Tom. What are you doing, Tom? <laughs> uh, there you go, Mackenzie. What what did you think about this episode? What was good? What was bad? And what could be better? Well, I'll be honest, I don't like most of Eccleson's episodes. And these are two really? that I actually tolerate <laughs> and I like. So it's like I'm I'm kind of oh, no. here. <laughs> I fixed it. <laughs> In Mackenzie's defense, I don't oh, know what either. So I mean overall as a as an error. I I I'm had nothing to do with it. <laughs> All right, unlimited power. <laughs> Little tiny box. Unlimited that was, never, that, was, like, that was Melanie's can. version of trying to throw my wasted uh, action because <laughs> you know in Streamyard none of the actions work. So that was yeah, that was the equivalent of that. <laughs> unlimited power, power until I have the unlimited power and take Melanie. Out uh, Melanie as well. Okay, I can bring myself back power. in though. Too right, much yeah, power yeah. here. <laughs> Hello, all your <laughs> game team of the. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway, well, Mackenzie, you you two get five. Mackenzie, can we make that a clip? I mean, can we clip that? I mean, that's yeah, we, I'm perfect. sure we could. Uh, we're gonna... <laughs> Nick, like we're really Eggleton. professional. Bye. I swear to we are. We're really professional. professional. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Mackenzie, from, uh, before Mackenzie. we get to a commercial yeah, break, just like... stupid, silly, and that's really the point of them. I felt was that's it was a kid show at the time when Doctor Who first <laughs> I, debuted. It. And this is maybe a little bit, uh, you know, 
British people like their toilet humor, but maybe it was a little bit overboard, which is why I gave it a yeah. seven because there was a little bit, as Dave said, it was a little bit over exaggerated with all the farts that was going on, but it was silly. <laughs> and that's why I liked it. It was entertaining. That's all I was really looking for. Was I entertained? Yes. That's pretty much what I was looking for. Yeah, <laughs> those those right. costumes, those costumes getting, when they changed out from their human form was <laughs> just, right, oh, it was horrible <laughs> you Completely could totally agree. tell that it was just the oh they the zipper in it it just oh it looked terrible <laughs> it was not believable at that point <laughs> All right. but i have to agree with tom you said waiting for the potty commercial yeah yeah that's appropriate oh, hello our candy man from the uk doctor was originally a children's family show maybe it was trying to gauge its audience as a, this is the third episode trying to review as adults might be harder to try to see yeah. if it's through an eight-year-old kids exactly. and that might be like, like trying to how... bring in some nostalgia from you know because we were we were all adults then then were we going to have to where is dr who going to be able to bring in that same audience from back then this was a good episode to test that absolutely and I, it, that is the incredible chore that any showrunner no matter you know it, whoever takes on Doctor Who, they have that and comes the thing. I've got fans from 1963 and I've got fans now to 2023. So mm -hmm. I mean that this mm -hmm. is a really hard stretch to entertain all that. You got people yeah. who would see this and go, uh, you know what? The the black and white episodes are just as good. <laughs> 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 so I mean this is uh you know it was really hard because where do you ascertain how much influence that they had from the budget mm -hmm. how much of the creativity mm -hmm. and I, <laughs> so mckenzie i'll put it this way so for the folks who've just already answered so there would be nick dave and mckenzie if and we'll go to the commercial break if you had a chance now that rtd is back would you revisit the Raxacorical Phallopatorians at all, or is this something that should stay in 2005? You know, I'll open, I'll open up to the entire floor, but... I would. I, 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 yeah, I would yeah, yeah absolutely. Would I don't you have keep... a problem with them. Mm -hmm. Yes. I have a problem with their rubber suits. I think that was one of their, mm -hmm. their better That's parts. That's the whole issue I had was the rubber suits. Oh, I don't... Like, I like the rubber suits. Spoiler alert, they do go back and revisit them right yeah. well i'm i'm, I'm oh, referring man. to yeah i'm referring to now if he had the chance and one episode coming up for and he absolutely can because remember slithina is a family name so it was that was just them that were hell-bent on ruling blah 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 blah, blah. so they could revisit the, the species itself absolutely could and who we mm -hmm. know the raxicolical file patorians are probably the nice folks you're just showing just... off now <laughs> <laughs> yes yes i am yeah, anyways no, I am, but that is fine speaking of showing off we're going to go on a commercial break when we return um wrapping up anything that mckenzie has at the last minute then we're going to go over to tom Ooh. melanie's 20 minutes enough <laughs> <laughs> well we return and we're gonna to get to your chats when we come back please uh, stay logged on tuned in and become part of the legend we'll be right back. You have more options than ever before when choosing a film, a television, or internet series, a book to curl up with, or even a radio show or podcast. Get to know the people who are creating for you. The Hangin' With Web Show, hosted by award-winning author and journalist G.W. Pometer, is the Internet's fastest-growing web talk show series. The Hangin' With Web Show features professional, yet casual, in-depth interviews with creative arts and entertainment pros. Meet the people behind a digital revolution in creating more quality content than ever before in the history of media. Find the Hanging With Web Show on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter, or simply go to www.hanginwithshow.com. That's www.hanginwithshow.com. My name is Jamie Engel, critically acclaimed author of The Toilet Papers, Places to Go While You Go, a short story collection suited to match your bathroom needs. 
Only have to go a little? No problem. I've got stories under a thousand words for you. Far from pooping? I've got you covered. With stories over 5,000 words to keep you occupied while your latrine stays occupied. And that's not all. The Toilet Papers is endorsed by the fine folks from Squatty Potty, the stool for better stools. But don't take my word for it. See what Dookie the Squatty Potty Unicorn has to say on YouTube. You won't be disappointed. Well, I've got to go, but you can grab your copy of The Toilet Papers on Amazon in ebook or print, or get an autographed copy from me at therightangle.com. And don't worry, I promise I'll wash my hands first. The Toilet Papers. You might just stay in the bathroom longer than you need to. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Legend of the Traveling Tardis. My name is Christian Basil. I'm here with Dave McKenzie, the Reverend Abagam, better known as the Hashtag Guru, Tom Kosak. We also have the author, filmmaker of, and all-around gentleman out there, but you best know him as editor of the Cosmic Mask um, for Nick Smith and the lovely Melanie Dean. And uh, Mark, take that back. Seriously, Mark, take that back. <laughs> Seriously, no, that's not cool, Mark. Should I even put that chat? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is so bad. I love Jamie. If you meet Jamie, he's sweet. <laughs> and she helps keep this show running out there. There you go. Make it <laughs> Welcome back. If you were just joining us, we are reviewing two episodes as we move forward to the 60th anniversary. We're heading back to uh, Eccleston's time as the doctor reviewing uh, Aliens of London and World War Three. Tom, you're up. What's going on, Dave? Tom, you're up. You also, too, rated it just like Mackenzie. Oh, before uh, Mackenzie, did you have any further you wanted to add before I go to Tom? Well, I, I'm really looking forward to hearing how Melanie just completely obliterates this episode. I, I, I'm actually looking most forward to that. <laughs> she just had her own episode. Just give her the whole whole show out there. All in good time. This is going to be all in good time out there. Well, Tom, you might want to give some room for Melanie down there. You also do rated a 7-7. Seven, seven. Tell us where it went, how it went, and what. I'm still freaking from that last commercial. Oh, my Lord. Every time you play this, I... Brings chills down my spine, like going from a poop commercial to she vanished. Like, what the hell? <laughs> right. What's like, going on? Like, like, yeah. control who, who we, you need to flip them, us. make it so that you end up on a happy note, not on a depressed. Okay, oh. fair enough. Okay. Okay. That's, that's fair. fair. That's that's fair. fair. I'm gonna go drink now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Cheers. Uh. There, I just okay. flipped the commercials. Oh, are you happy? That's <laughs> week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tom, 7-7, seven, okay. seven. what's up? I guess with my attention deficit disorder, I never pay attention to the CGIs. Or, because I did, I did binge watch like 10 seconds before the show came on the show. And I just don't remember it. I watched it. I remember the basics of it, you know. Would you know, I'm like farting when I'm trying to save the world. And yeah, that's the greatest line in the, any, any Unit show. was mentioned, Mark. <laughs> but uh, as Mark... Our own Mark Robinson said last week it was not unit soldiers in there. Okay, I never, until he said that, I never really paid attention to that. They're just <laughs> military. Andrew. Deep breath. Okay. We're going to have farting jokes all this episode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Keep going, Tom. Uh, okay, so I said oh. seven to seven. 
<laughs> because it's in the, I liked it better than uh, the end of the world. The rubber aliens, again, it's silliness, and of course brought back for Eccleston again, and of course into Sarah Jane Adventures. So a popular characters, people like that. I had no problems with it. The zipper thing, like, okay. Automatically, oh, here's a zipper pops right across your forehead, and that's minor things. Um, Harriet Jones. Harriet Jones. Harriet Jones. <laughs> we know who you are. Lori I love that so much. Harriet Jones <laughs> of whatever, and the MP. Is it? It's, she's the light. Head. It's, okay, I'm going to change things. I'm going to make things better. Uh, so I like. Could I just jump across? I guess I did. You know me. I'm jumping everywhere. So one of the things I, I found interesting with Harriet Jones in this whole episode, and you will see it later as her character evolves, the world's coming to an end, and all she's worried about is getting those cottage hospitals. Her yeah. world continues to spin around what's going on. And that's all. I was just like, I, I just want to make sure that the prime minister has this information. I'm just like, she is one determined lady, but then it, it'll spill out eventually when we start heading over into the Christmas invasion and, and such. And then politicians finally... with their one track minds, they always do one little thing. That's what they hired me for. That's what they voted me in for to do this one thing. That's what we're stuck with all the time. Hmm. Jackie, yes, she was worried about Rose. Like, oh, I'm sorry, it's not. Uh... I spent 12 months and everything. I'd be freaked out too. And Mickey, so introducing the characters we'll, we'll see further to the series. You know, I like stuff like that. And right. Doc being stranded, which of course we had uh, jumping into the British audio where Eighth Doctor is stranded. A little bit and pieces. When something is established, then you go back and make little changes to the past and make new stories. So I like things like that. Uh, the at the end of Aliens of London with the cliffhangers. Thank uh, cliffhangers. Yes. What's going to happen next? What's going to happen? And then with the trailer that's going to be coming up. Say, so, okay, I, I got me interested. Mm -hmm. And and for me, with the end of World War Three, it has a happy ending. Okay, it's all taken care of. I can go back to what I'm doing, you know, a little bit of enjoyment of Doctor Who. You know, that's all. Not, nothing's wrong with the rubber men, rubber characters. All government crap, as we all know about. Uh, again, I don't remember the CGI one bit about what they changed here and there, but, you know, I guess it wasn't important to me. It, wasn't, it was not important to me to remember. But, so the special effects weren't even the, in 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 your uh, purview. It did it didn't it didn't it didn't. Uh... The, the zipper thing was like okay, well, zipper thing. Kids will like it. Kids will like the fart things. It brings a next generation into Doctor Who, which we all need. So it was the silliness, the idea like we always need to have vinegar. Vinegar is an important staple in life. Drink your apple cider vinegar. Always keep vinegar on hand because you never know something like this could happen. It's a big giant monster. The freaking claw is going to fart on you and just rip your head off and go. <laughs> so, yeah, it was okay. Okay. I enjoyed it. I gotcha. No worries. So, gotcha. The, the... <laughs> We're going to be waiting for Melanie's. <laughs> I got, uh, Melanie, I saw some pictures that you uploaded. Did you want to do this now or do you want to wait until the after party? So um, about. Yeah, it could be after party. Okay, you can be after party. Melanie, you gave it the highest score, and I know that's a lie. <laughs> what would you originally, what would you have rated this? Farting Monsters. Oh, four and oh, four. Four and four. Okay, so you four and four. And a half. And a half. I doubled it. I okay. Make, I, made it, I made it nice by, by uh, doubling it, but yeah, four and four. So not four eight and eight. four. Gotcha. Eight would have been the combined. <laughs> no, it was, it was four and four. Gotcha. So you waited until last to talk mm -hmm. about what you thought about this episode. Because I didn't want to start off just ranting about how bad this is and then make the rest of the cast here, all the rest of my fellow panelists, uh, have to... Um, yeah, no, see, it's, it's better, seriously. Well that's, how, well, that's how it works. We get into the, we we get into the bad stuff. The we get the bad stuff out of the way, and then we start going into the better, and then we try to see if there's 
you know, there's some give and some conversation about maybe somebody saw something that I didn't or we didn't eviscerate. Um, but four and four, go ahead, girl. You wanted okay. the platform. Here we go. <laughs> I didn't rewatch this. I didn't have to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, first ruffle, rule of this episode is we don't talk about this episode. No, I'm not watching this thing again. This is terrible. Okay, um, let's try being the pos a positive note. So I'm gonna try being positive. Be positive, okay. negative, positive, negative. Uh, we have Doctor Sato. Somebody shows up for mm -hmm. the first time in this and has to negative um pig pilot why what that was your red herring i'm sorry i mean I Pigs in Spain. really oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Perfect. perfection perfection Ooh. where did that come from Dave Chapman being awesome. Seriously, that was. Oh. You know I was going to leave with this damn pig. I mean, is... honestly, I mean, it, it's squealing. This is, this was going to be the. Oh, literally, it, it wasn't just the red herring of RTD and the brilliant writers of this show uh, going, we're going to make the audience think it was a pig and it was pigs in space. And then the Slothines are going to show up. No, that was actually the plan of the Slothines. They had the space pig thinking, oh, these humans are going to fall for the space pig while we and our dastardly deeds do, you know, take over and all that. Space pig? Really? Okay, so, okay, we'll leave the space pig alone. <sighs> um, let's see. What else can I go on about? Uh, well, we'll go ahead and address the big, the big uh, fart wait, in the wait, room. Wait, before you, farting. before you proceed on that one. There's something actually good that I would actually like to point to the space pig. First of all, we okay. finally see Tosh and Torchwood starts to play yes. into this whole thing. And her little autopsy. Also, time. I'll give credit where credit's due because this is a testament to Eccleston. I thought it was acting because he really took that space pig. And when he finally gets shot by the military, he felt, felt it. bad for that piggy. Right. Because he realized, wait a minute, this is just a genetic pig. This is just. A pig? Why? Why murder a pig? Right. Um. So yeah, no, no. That's another good positive note on there, and showing that the the immense empathy that the doctor does have, well, on something that on the surface you can easily dismiss and say, oh, it's funny, oh, it's you know, it's it's nonsense, all that kind of fun stuff. And mm -hmm. I will because the writing is nonsense for a space pig. But you know, he was he was very he was genuinely uh, upset. You know, he was just. Why did you kill it? You know, and I'm, and that's going to be uh, a tenant of the doctor that you're going to go going forward. Of he's always going to bring up those kind of the the, the big. He's going to help be. He's going to help write a lot of people's moral compass on that. Why? Why are you doing that? Why was that your your gut reaction was violence, and that stems from fear. So, okay, bravo on that one. Um, I was gonna go right into the farting month part. Um, oh, go ahead. I just I just wanted to bring that up there. One part portion when it comes to the farting monsters that I think a lot of people forget. Um, nobody's onset. It's not like somebody's onset. It's not like it, it's it's um, Nick Briggs sitting there with his little Dalek thing, going you know making his little voice and and acting along with the actors. Right. No one's sitting there farting while everyone's doing the fart. You know, is acting. A lot of those extra farts and everything was added in post. So yes, you're going to have absolutely a few of them that are going to be scripted because Eccleston's going to have to say, you know, can you please stop farting, you know, and these kind of things. The actors are going to giggle here and there and all that. But they really, whoever was in that editing suite, now, which makes me wonder if it was RTD sitting there next to the editor going, the sound editor going, you know what be good right now? More farts. We need to add more farts. No, 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 not that little one. Not that, go with the juicy one. Yeah, yeah, that, that one. Do it again do it again three more and then the other one okay now let's move on they just kept adding them and honest to god it for me sometimes when it comes to comedy hitting the same note over and over and over and over is genuinely kind of funny if it it it, it even if it, the repetition can sometimes make people you start getting into laughter it's kind of like how sometimes laughter itself can be very infectious not because maybe the joke landed or it's or it was okay, but one person laughing for a continuous amount of time kind of becomes its own earworm and then it gets you to giggle. So 
maybe he was thinking, okay, well, we're going to keep hitting this joke hard and eventually it's going to land. And, you know, people are going to kind of like loosen up and really get into it. I didn't. When I w- first was trying to go through Doctor Who, I turned it off. This, this, this episode, and then I tried mm-hmm. it again and then turned it off on the second one. Wow. I couldn't get through it. I didn't think it was funny. I couldn't get past the farting. I it was just too campy and I just turned it off. And the um, and I'm grateful that I went back and went, all right, I'm gonna persevere and get through this. Um, but yeah, the, the the farting really, really, you know, took me out of it. Now, another part, which mm-hmm. I'm glad of who whoever's running the the the, the uh, pictures here, the Mickey plot. And this becomes a huge plot point going forward because they always keep bringing this up with Rose mm-hmm. and especially with a they keep bringing it up between Rose and her mother and that it becomes a big a, a friction point and of course it's going to become a friction point with Mickey Rose goes missing for a year they think Mickey killed her that is insanely messed up that's that's got to cause a <clears throat> lot of just grief and emotion and what they they he even says that he brought her that they brought him into for questioning and that they were planning on trying to 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 put him away you know for they really thought that he murdered her and then they're going to keep going with oh but they're together but they're still you know here and there you know they're still kind of on again off again and you know what if if she went off with the doctor or whoever and I'm Mickey and then I'm being detained and questioned and people actually think that I killed my girlfriend, I don't want anything to do with you anymore. I'm sorry. That's insane. So yeah. from a writing standpoint, I really did not like that. And, and, and that they keep bringing that up and somehow it's lighthearted. And maybe that's a part of the 90s where we didn't really think about, well, you know, it's the funny kind of abuse. Ah, it's okay. You know, this, this kind of stuff is just kind of, you know, oh, it's a funny little thing that everyone thought and we're moving on. Try writing that right now and say, oh, yeah, we just thought he killed her. But, you know, they, they patched it up and it's fine. It's it's good. The mom is, is you know, they're thick as thieves. You know, it's like it's like he she adopted him as a son. I that part really got me. And going forward for this season and even into the tenant season with them kind of going back and forth with, oh, well, you know, that maybe she loves, you know, maybe she loves the doctor. Maybe the doctor loves her. Maybe there's no, you know, all that kind of trying to create a triangle. Mm. I never was in on that triangle from the very get go with you, you, you try to do you, you did my boy Mickey wrong and thinking that he got, you know, he tried killing his girl that. <clears throat> See, everyone's quiet right now. When no one's laughing, this is not. I told you you should. Have well, no, I, it's <clears throat> I, no. I see. I, I see your point of view, and there was, but there was yeah, also right went, mm. something about this that it I didn't. Like it that. kind of because I saw some other things in there. First of all, there was a development between Mickey and Jackie post Rose came coming back. In mm-hmm. fact, you know, he ends up trying to save her life, and they're trying to figure out how to kill the Slovene, and then the by off chance figure it out it's vinegar and then now they're working together which kind of goes into the end of the episode where mickey has control of the missile that's going to blow up his girlfriend and the doctor (laughs) and there's always that little thing in the back of my mind it's like he was very you know i also know that you know it's either this or this and that is the question about the doctor's lifestyle when you go into the doctor's world i mean he has to make all these decisions when nobody else can and and that's what he's trying to impress on jackie and the doctor admittedly goes i i you know i i i I could save the world but lose you rose and this was something i think they were trying to leak into a little bit yeah it did come out as camp and i think that was the only way to do because another way around this it would have been way too dark and that's, a- and that's, I think, my b- biggest issue with this episode is it didn't strike balance. It The mm-hmm. pendulum swung so far from very dark to, oh, add some more farts. That'll balance it out. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I think it, it it detracts from the story. It didn't, it, I, I didn't like the timing because of that. So it was very, it's, a, it's two episodes that are an extremely hard slog for me to go back and watch. I just, I don't find any enjoyment in it. 
No, that's fine. But we at least got to meet this young lady. And I was very happy that we had her on the show on that Bedland. So I hope she's doing great and I hope she's doing well. We'll wish her come back soon. Oh, she is going she's going off. She right now she's doing so many things for like Airbnb and Ted Lasso mm -hmm. and all this other kind of stuff. Follow her on her on her socials because Annette yeah, she's, is amazing. She's taking on. And honestly, when we come back and we when we revise her story coming back, mm -hmm. honestly, not a big spoiler alert. It's my favorite episode of Ecclestons. Mm -hmm. It'll be a 10. You'll know it'll be a 10 for me. Gotcha. Well, folks, for those of you who are watching us uh, um, or listening to us on our audio, thank you so much for joining us. We are going to go into our after party. Stick around for you get a uh, little bit of an extra. Uh, for those of you who are interested in what I thought of the episode, stick for the after party out there. If you're listening to us on... There we are. If you're listening to us on... <laughs> Whoopsie. If you're listening to us or you, if you're interested in listening to us, you can always join us on iHeartRadio, sci-fi.radio, download the app for free, Odyssey, Spotify, Spreaker, Podbean, Player FM, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, you can listen to us. But if you want the full range, don't forget to go on uh, Facebook.com slash The Traveling Tardis. We are halfway to 68,000. We're getting there. A lot of you have signed up and thank you so much and we can't wait. Yeah, exactly, Nick. We can't wait to get to the to the big seven. <laughs> oh, we're hoping to do it before the end of this year, but uh, it's been a little slow down. As soon as Shooty and, and David come back for Doctor Who, I'm sure that's going to be taking off. Don't forget, if we yeah. earn your subscription, please go ahead and do so now. YouTube.com slash The Legend of the Traveling Tardis. 30,000 people strong and climbing as what I can see here. And of course, if you want to help us out and if we earned your respect as far as the episodes and what you like here, please make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe. And you can always uh, chat with us uh, post the episode. You can always comment about an episode. And we'll always be around to come out. And if you see like this episode after the premiere and you want to write something down, yeah, we will respond. Trust us. And uh, I will go off further. Believe me, I have more <laughs> content we can deal with. So if you want to just contact me, let's go. <laughs> TikTok at the traveling TARDIS out there. And uh, as you've seen in our ads for uh, Worlds Apart, uh, there is the uh, ad uh, and the referral code to go to Doctor Who dash worlds apart dot com slash R slash four two seven six. And who knows uh, later on when we start uh, moving with uh, the worlds apart team that you will be seeing us playing more games and some things special going on. But uh, the fat Viking and I, we're still working on that. So hopefully you will get to see uh, more stuff. Again, for those of you who are watching on the video, if you want to stick around for the after party, please do. Uh, we've got some additional content. Uh, but those of you who are listening to the audio, we thank you so much. Um, catch us. Got to gotta follow. Great stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Um, please stay. We're just going to end the audio version. And for everybody who's still watching on the YouTube channel, the Facebook page, wherever you're watching, stand by. We'll be right back. Okay. Yay. So. Uh -huh. I'm so glad you brought up Doctor Who Worlds Apart because I've had multiple people say, when are you playing again? When are you playing? Ooh, are, you playing are you playing again? Are you playing, playing again? again? <laughs> Yeah, and I managed to get a quick game of it in Ooh, until my until my laptop died right at the very end. Aww. he still oh, won oh, the oh. jerk. <laughs> he well, still. I, he, I was I sitting there, the update, and yeah, yeah and his there. yeah his uh his his well his Wi-Fi cut off or something happened. My laptop and you were gone, died, power. and I was about to end the show, and the next thing I know, the thing goes back, and then he's he's killing all my people and like ah, maybe I should be awesome. right now. I was like, he just came back out of nowhere and he yes, was like Dave. I'll end the slow you love I'll him just, into a false sense of security almost, think of it I, yeah, I know, yeah. it's You're not right there. so next time I'll just end the show it's like click click Tony take us out bye so um Who's the fat Viking? Uh, that is uh, Mort from uh, Doctor Who Worlds Apart, the CEO and the man who runs the Worlds Apart. So reality, uh, reality plus. Reality plus. I had to think about that because I know no. they just they just change it. They tweak the name a little. Okay, so my take on this episode. Uh, yeah. What number? Uh, what number? I'm in a three way with Mac and Tom. I go seven seven. It it was. Uh, I, I agree. It is just. 
Another episode. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> oh, where are you going? <laughs> His laptop's dying. His laptop's dying. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you the John Cleese. There you go. How about oh, you? Yeah. <laughs> I give you the John Cleese. Hey, Christian, how many hours were you in line for that? <sighs> no, 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 no. Say it. Say it because I have my own Megacon. I, I'm not exaggerating. I would say about between three and four. Mm. Not exaggerating. Long long enough that I had to do a 99. Wait, what do we got there? What do we got? By myself. Ooh. Yes. I painted this in line. Wow. I just brought canvas, so it still has to be stretched. But I literally painted this in line to get Hayden's autograph. Oh. Wow. I had already did the, the blacks. I already knew what I wanted to do. And when I handed it to him, I had paintbrushes stick. I have wet paint brushes. I tend to stick them in my bun so that way they don't, I can't put them anywhere else. Um, right. And I'm like handing it to him and I have paint all over myself. I'm like, just don't touch your <laughs> face. He's like, why? And I'm like, it's wet. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. I'm like, yeah, just, just right here where That's we are. awesome. So that was my Megacon thing, waiting mm. in line for an hour and a half. An hour and, and a half. The painting, so that was kind of cool. Wow. No, I'm not, a, you know what? Hang on. I'll move you over there. Um, just in case for those of you who don't know about this particular picture, uh, John, I had gotten in line and I was at the very end of the beginning of the next line, which means that they were cutting off the line and it was just one turn, one the little turn. What's that? The yeah, photos. He went over the photos. So it was just one. If you've ever seen the line, it's just like this one little, I would say about what, like 30 feet, that one little. Round. If you're as old as me and you've ever played the game Snake, uh, it's that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just one little group around. And then he went to do the photos. So I waited and waited and waited. And then all of a sudden the guy comes up and goes, oh, yeah, he went to lunch. Oh, and I was like, oh. Gotta eat. No, no, no. I'm not complaining about that. I'm just like, you're like ah, yeah. So we're going on to like 90 minutes and I'm watching the clock. I'm like, oh, my panel's coming up. And oh. uh, all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, uh, I got to get going. So as soon as I get to the front of the line, the VIPs come up. No. And the VIP started coming in <laughs> and started doing their own thing. And then I finally get to the front. And surely enough, the panel starts. <laughs> and all that was was our good friend over here. Hang on. Whoop, wrong, one. wrong one. Wrong one. There we Keep go. Keep going. There, there we, go. we are. Dave Chapman ran the whole panel by himself while I'm still waiting in line. Which and day was the time that? It's just going on that. It was a Sunday. You you were you were you were running amok getting ready to leave. Can can you hear me now, Andrew? Someone said I had no audio. I don't know if it's working now. Very fine. It's yeah. a little muffled, but uh, we can hear you. Yeah, can you hear me now? No, that's fine. So I waited and waited and finally got in line. And the first thing he does, he looks at it. He doesn't even have a clue to what this thing is. And I said, uh, John, you were in Doctor Who. I mean, you you don't remember. And he goes, oh, yeah. and then he grabs the TARDIS and he holds and he starts to pose with it. And I said, John, no, 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 that's not what you do. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, John, no, please don't pose with it. Next thing I'm also beginning to know, his, I guess his entourage, his family was, uh, and I understand why they did it. They were kind of like, you're not going to sell this on China. I know. I know. I've never sold this there would never do that and i said i'm just like believe me and i literally pulled out my phone went through the page and showed them all the celebrities that we've taken a picture with out there so there's your John. mic went weird when you were looking up so you couldn't see us kind of go ah so i don't know if you've got a headset mic or what's going on but make sure that you're you're oh locally. my mic went. hold on yeah, it's just that you're fine now as long as you're looking. Yeah, at we can hear you. Yeah. Oh, okay. We can hear you, but you just all of a sudden just just. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I turned. I'm sorry. I turned my head out there. Okay. So it's like you're trying to to tell us a secret without telling us the secret. And we were all like communicating. <laughs> like <laughs> it's just our girl secret here. Anyway, so uh, the family's told me you, you're not going to sell this online. And I was like, no, I'm not going to sell it. it. It's and I I pulled out my phone, showed them all the celebrities that have taken picture, and they they got it. 
So John says, well, what do you want me to do with it? And I said, do what you do best. He put it on the table and that's what came out right there. <laughs> it's, it's exactly. And I said, John, you just made my day. <laughs> Everything was said and done and the panel was ending. So I ran all the way across the hall of Megacon to get to uh, Dave, who was just ending the panel that's by himself. Oh, no. So I'd we say. All, we all took a moment to make fun of Christian. So I had <laughs> moment because we spent said spent several moments making fun of Christian over the previous hour. Well, I didn't show anybody this picture yet, but um, after almost everything was said and done, I did get one more doctor. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. Hmm. So Gates is totally another worth doctor. Totally worth it. Doctor so Christ that was it. yes, that was uh, that was it. So anyway. Going back to seven and seven, basically parroting what everybody else said, it was a very campy show, but it did kind of harken back to classic who, which was campy to begin with. Um, but I do think you, when you start to weed out the silliness, you start to see actually some good stuff the relationship that you begin to see with Mickey. And how he's going to develop uh, over time that he's not Mickey the idiot anymore. But this is where the foundations of that started. You know, uh, and Mickey's going to be a lot more than what he is. Jackie's going to be part of the doctor's world, and she's going to be a lot more than what she is. And the woman who we thought, I, I really thought uh, Harry Jones was going to be a one off. Oh, I'm so thankful she wasn't. And she, mm -hmm. uh, I forgot the actress who plays her, but um, magnificent job. And I'd love to see her when she finally comes back in a Christmas, the Christmas invasion and at Journey's End. Uh, when her character flourishes out out there and becomes a staple of, you know, the government, but also a woman. Penelope to Wilton. A, Penelope Wilton. Oh, she's a fantastic. I don't know, even know why I don't remember I her name. But I don't, my brain just again. went we by. Won. We know what happens to the character, but I want to see her come back anyway. She's she dead. <laughs> Give me a version of her in Pete's world. Time to be rewritten. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I, yeah, Penelope, well, and just uh, I loved her as um, uh, Sean's mom in uh, Shaun of the Dead. Yes, she was awesome. Yes. Out there. Oh, pickle! She's nice. a national treasure. Oh, Jamer Jean, thank you, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, I I had my misgivings about the pig, <laughs> but I really saw something about that because the people, the, the the aliens who created the pilot pig, made this joke. And that was disheartening, especially when it comes to Eccleston. I really think he tapped into something really good because, yeah, we see the pig and and on the lab table and the pig finally gets shot and everything. But we finally see that moment where the doctor's showing through that everybody else was seeing this joke, but the doctor saw compassion. And that's where I think we are seeing Eccleston flourish, you know, uh, to to his character uh, you know, that we see more of the doctor uh, post-traumatic syndrome. Mm. But he's starting to develop his sense of importance. When I used to talk about at panels, you know, the eighth doctor to me was the romantic while everybody's walking by that pile of snot on the floor. The eighth doctor is looking at it and seeing pure beauty. And yeah. that's the compassion I think that we see in the doctor. What we see as peripheral or something that's not in our capacity to see right the doctor sees it and has compassion for it so even though that that was a kind of a weird thing i thought it was you know something special that really brought out elkelston and you could see that you know he could have taken it either way but you could really see what a determined actor he was to flesh out his own doctor. You also started seeing more of a relation between the doctor and Rose because now, again, Rose is now in Doctor's World. Whereas she traveled with him in this particular episode, now she is a part of events. That his, his world's bleeding into hers because now we've got a crashing ship above our heads. Yeah, I think my favorite scene was when Jackie slapped the doctor. <laughs> But that was started. That's what started uh, the domestication of the uh, of the doctor into the Tyler's world. Um, it's not a. It's not one of the greatest episodes in the world. Will I watch it again? Yeah. 
do I want the Rex Coracle Fallopatorians to show back up? Yeah, of course. I think they could really do some serious things. Uh, and I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if RTD did bring it back. It was his monsters to begin with. I don't know if the farts, farting thing will continue on out there. But yeah, it would bring in uh, Margaret, who we will see later. And I don't know, no spoilers to, to the episodes out there. But for one of the most campy episodes that we had led up to one of probably i think as you said i think melanie one of the best episodes of eccleston's time out I there go as far as one of the best scenes definitely one of the best scenes and that was because uh annette is an exceptionally wonderful actress and yeah those two played it off so well the thing was we had to sit through this to get to here yes and I actually appreciate it more that we sat through this to get through here when we get to uh, eventually Boomtown and the story of uh, Margaret's take when we revisit the uh, the Celine family. When the Muppets take up, uh, it was called oxygen? the Muppets Take O Two. The O Two is the oh big... okay. Oh okay. When the Muppets Take O Two show, they did the pigs in space with the Doctor, mm -hmm. both Tennant and uh, Davison. Uh, no. Oh, what's her face was all about? <laughs> so, Kylie Minogue. She was in that. The Muppets. That? Kylie Minogue. She was in the Muppets one. The the Muppets Take O Two. Oh, okay. I haven't seen that. It's a live show. I, I, I've seen I've seen clips on YouTube, but I haven't seen like the whole the whole thing out there. So, um, I honestly think that this ep these two episodes could be better. I would actually move it to an eight if I was given a chance to edit it into one episode. There's a lot of stuff that you could, you could call, I think, and you could tighten up and make that pendulum not swing as far. Kind of bring it a little closer to bed, together, get some more balance, and maybe remove, you know, about three quarters of the farts. <laughs> maybe more than that. Well, uh, we got a gift for everybody. Uh, again, if you please go ahead and subscribe over to The Legend of the Traveling Tardis, go ahead right now, YouTube.com. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was putting a uh, comment up. And um, we got a special gift for everybody. It's going to be premiering. Uh, we have a, uh, a playlist that Simon does for us. It's called <laughs> Simon Says Sci-Fi Vlogs. Uh, and we're going to premiere it in this episode, but it will actually end up in the playlist uh, this coming Friday. Uh, but we want you to subscribe to the channel because these are going to be stuff that you will not see anywhere else. Uh, as far as the social media is concerned, it won't be on Twitch, it won't be on Facebook or anything. So without further ado, I'd like to bring Simon on uh, for his upcoming episode of Simon Does Squidward. <laughs> What's that? It's just suddenly there was Squidward. Squidward. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, here is Simon Fisher yeah. Becker, better known as Dorian Moldovar from the 11th Doctor series. And uh, take it away, Simon. Hello and welcome and today is uh, Monday the 24th of April 2023 and this is my Simon Says Sci-Fi for the Legend of the Travelling TARDIS and this vlog is called Avoiding Collision. There have been lots of speculation about planet Earth being hit by an asteroid or a meteorite and uh, this has caused a lot of excitement amongst certain people. Uh, as well as uh, superstition and conspiracy theories. Uh, there, of course, have been a, a lot more nocturnal meteor showers, and we see them, of course, because for some reason the skies are much cleaner than they have been in recent years. And we have, a, have reports of uh, meteor rocks falling through the atmosphere and landing in people's gardens. There are many sci-fi stories, of course, and uh, movies showing mankind creating missile, missiles or the like to send off with the hope that it'll either uh, uh, disperse uh, an asteroid or at least knock it off course. And there are other stories that we just have to sort of brace ourselves and wait for impact. But what is the reality? In recent years, it's become clear that we need a lot of very clean energy. 
Uh, but it's proving expensive to develop, and that is why there is not the political will. But if the meteorites are heading towards us, something has to be done. For decades, the scientific community has been developing highly imaginative projects to clean nuclear waste and to build systems to pull meteors into our orbit so that we can mine them for their luscious uh, minerals and whatever they have to offer. And in doing so, having stuff to create alternative energy. Different countries have various ways of developing alternative country, uh, <laughs> developing alternative energy. Sweden is a perfect example. They use industrial and domestic waste, which they, uh, which they burn down, and they use the ash to help them create clean energy. And they become so efficient that they need more and more of the, of the waste, the waste material. And they've gone to Norway. They import Norway's waste material, and they return the ash to Norway in the form of a fertilizer. Here in the UK, we've got various scientists and inventors coming up with all sorts of ideas. One that comes to mind is Trevor Bayliss. Oh, he's a marvelous chap. Uh, he created the wind up radio that many people use today, especially those in communities where there is no real electricity. So they get to hear and develop their minds uh, um, uh, by listening to the radio, which they simply wind up like a clock. He also developed some sort of beaker that would take river water and clean it so that it would become drinkable water. And many fishermen uh, and campers use them, as well as those who live near rivers that don't have any mains water. He often talked about developing much larger silo systems uh, so it could help clean rivers totally and possibly even the parts of the sea. But he was never taken seriously. But today, what with water companies chucking uh, millions of tonnes of uh, raw sewage into the rivers, maybe Trevor Bayliss is our saviour. So, if we go back to the idea of pulling asteroids into orbit or knocking them off our path, we must focus on developing plenty of clean, cheap energy. And in my view, we can never have too much. For those who dismiss of what I say as being pie in the sky or, or just pure fantasy, may I remind you, the fantasy of yesterday is the reality of today. And the reality and the fantasy of today will become the reality of tomorrow. And maybe it could be argued that tomorrow is already here, but we're not ready. Well, thank you for listening. Until the next time, Toodle Pip. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yay! I love those so much. It's one of those. Uh, I wish that I wish we could somehow like put them like in the calm app where you listen to them and they're very just calm. <laughs> He's very educational. It's it's. I love him. I love it. I love it. Love it. Simon should start his own. Um, what is it? Zen moments. Listen. Yeah. Yes. Him. Take yes. a deep breath. <laughs> He's a very lovely, soothing voice. He really he does. does. And it's very and and even and and articulate as well so sometimes you have people who are very soothing and it's just at the point where you're just kind of the words are almost kind of really molding or melding into one another his is still very articulate mm -hmm. well it's uh just to let you know <laughs> that's you only that's exclusive as well as our videos of the day yes uh as our uh, videos of the day where you can catch them on the youtube and uh, we usually try to do a video of the day every every other day just uh just some fun so you can have some lively doctor who stuff including with dalek hal which uh we've been taking dalek hal as you saw in the intro earlier uh chasing dorothy to get his uh, get her dog so uh 
we just like like to have a good time out there and we have these videos all oh good grief <laughs> the orange i have so much orange chocolate it's insane he just loaded me up and handed me this huge box and i walked around all of london up with it um and it's just basically orange chocolate it's terry's everything so i have terry's eggs i have terry's oranges i have every white chocolate dark chocolate milk chocolate Everything you could possibly think of chocolate that has orange in it, I am slowly Good. devouring. So, thank you, Mark. Kevin's going through it. Amber isn't because Amber absolutely abhors orange chocolate. So, she's oh, really? not partaking in it, Aww. but it wasn't for green. So. They have chocolate raspberry, too. Could have gotten yes, they do. But but yes, like, we're, oh, we're, we're slowly going through it all, and it's it's very lovely, and it's a nice little... I, I really do like that some of it's in little truffle form, so... Can just kind of. How many dinner day are you mucking my hungry? <laughs> oh, if you want any chocolate? I'll send it on over. Oh no no no! I'm trying not. I'm trying not to. I've lost fifteen pounds. I'm trying so hard to stick with it. Lost. I was like, wait, how? Okay, lost well, fifteen. Lost just, fifteen pounds. Heck yeah! Just doing going the diet route, doing diet and exercise. Yeah, I've done. I've, I've, I'm done the water right. thing. Videos. <laughs> Chrissy's making um uh fruit shakes every morning. Um, and I'm just limiting what I got, so I'm trying oh, very fantastic. hard to. Good on you. Yeah, so I can be around to do other shows and stuff like yes. that. Yes. Speaking of around, be around to do other shows. There, uh, we are coming up to the end of the show. So our special guest, Nick, uh, please tell us where you can find where you are at, where we can find uh, where Dave and I have written stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is best-selling author, actor, filmmaker, and editor of the Cosmic Mask. And how, how is that in relation to um, the Doctor Who Appreciation Society? So uh, really it's a zine where we want to make room for uh, short stories as well as nonfiction. So we have lots of articles, but also we encourage people to uh, write Thank fiction. You. Um, you know, we have six or seven stories with every issue every few months. But also we talk about different creative aspects of Doctor Who, like fan games, fan films. Uh, you can find it on the Doctor Who Appreciation Society website, and you can read um, digital versions of the issues there, including Yol's articles. And also you can find me via Nick Smith Films. Just type in Nick Smith Films, and I might just pop up. Do you need art for your zines? I do. You know, I'm always looking mm. for art, and okay. there is some fantastic art out there. Um, I'm definitely always looking for that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Barman's not oh, up there. Did that. Yeah, that's your power strip there, like, Nick. She's got a plug. Like, there you go. Plug. She's like, yeah. Got art. Now I'm just playing with the camera that's not working out well. That's going to stay there. Oh, there you go. So low. Okay, anyway, sorry. As we come to the end of our show, oh, cool! So yes. let's go oh, there. You go. There's your art there. Recent cover. That's just the one cover that I could find uh, of there's the sister magazine, uh, Celestial Toy Room. And that's by one of our cosmic mask artists, Megan Hunt. She's a uh, she's military. She's a single mom, but also she she loves to paint. She did this amazing watercolor, and we used it as the cover for that issue. That's and see if I can find the it did it, it Jody's the most thanks Andrew one. I'm just gonna see if I can find it here. Mark says I lost fifteen dollars in buying chocolate. <laughs> as we're as we're getting it worth it. <laughs> as we're wrapping up and uh Dave's and looking for that. Oh. Uh and as we go into the uh next episode, the next episode I think is Dalek, is that right? Yes, yes. ninety percent sure. Yeah, it's Dalek. Yes. So as we move towards the sixtieth anniversary, we will be reviewing uh, stuff that uh, we just haven't reviewed. A lot of you've been asking, "Hey, have you reviewed this? What do you think of that?" So we're going to be reviewing the stuff as we move forward, uh, and we will be reviewing the multi Doctor episodes as we get closer. The two, the three, the five. Uh, Time Crash, all those episodes that had multiple Doctors, we'll be running into those when we uh, make our way to the 60th anniversary, plus any celebrities or guests coming on our show, like our good friend Nick Smith out here. Uh, when we bring them on, uh, we'll be letting you know out there. And plus any other... Oh, hi. Yeah, I was going to say, look at the screen. You always, when you start talking... I'm looking at the camera. That's what I'm trying to see. You look up. 
I look up at the camera. That's the thing. It's my camera's right here. So I try. I try to be attentive, to like face to face out there. That is. So tell us a little bit about this before we go, Melanie. What's that? Because we could not li uh, line up uh, to grab the TARDIS to go. To, because the TARDIS decided he wanted to go to Epcot with Dave and not <laughs> uh, London with me. Uh, while I was there, I uh, went to the Who Shop Limited uh, mm -hmm. with Mark, and we picked up a, a little British cousin for the Legend of the Traveling TARDIS. And this is my little now my little TARDIS that I'll Aww. carry around. It's about the same size as the other one, except this this one's still blue. Um, as I have many photos, I need to. Give to Christian so we can start posting some of the, the of cousin um, running around London. But this is one where he got his feet wet, and that is the Thames. There's a little small area in the Thames Aww. where there's a little beachy area that we went down. We did a little bit of mudlarking, which is just picking through all the garbage. And I stuck the TARDIS there, so it's all it's wet with the Thames. So there's that. And one other quick little photo, since I wasn't on the last episode. <laughs> There's Mark uh, in his glorious self on the left, followed by me, my husband, Kevin, and my best friend, Amber. And this is where, when we were walking around, he took us to Leak Street, which was an amazing, amazing tunnel that um, the big thing about it is it is 100% open to graffiti artists, street artists, you name it, mural artists, what have you. You don't need a permit. You just show up and you just start painting and the tunnel itself is huge yes um but because everybody has that openness and willingness to go out there and paint something you might paint uh as you saw an hour ago might not be there again so it's constantly evolving it's constantly changing it's absolutely just intrinsically amazing it's energetic and you see all this stuff so if you're in London, if you're walking around, the best way I could point, uh, say that it's within walking distance, like of the eye and and um, all the other kind of little touristy things. But yeah, check it out. And this is an uh, edition of the uh, Doctor Appreciation Society, the Cosmic Mask. That's and awesome. yes, these are free. You can get online. And uh, again, <laughs> gloating, Dave and I have written <laughs> articles in certain magazines, so you can catch up what we've uh, written for the Cosmic Mask. Hopefully to do it again. I haven't done it in that in a while. I haven't I, every time uh actually work also for um uh clownfish and they usually ask me to write an article every now and then I go, Yeah, I'll write one and never do. <laughs> just, like, just never get around to it. Just like, oh yeah, I got that podcast thing going out there. But yeah, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. This is totally awesome. Nice digital. So let's go ahead and wrap things up. Uh, everybody, as you can see, the team below me, uh, we have the Rem and Amagon. Don't forget to check out uh, Rev's Raves and wait, Re Rev's Raves and Rants on the YouTube channel out there. Melanie Dean over at Pieces of Melee on the Instagram, and she's doing live feeds uh, every so often now that you're back. Yep, back uh, to cosplay. Got to keep working for San Diego Comic Con. Uh, Tampa Bay Comic Con's first. Wait. Okay, so yeah, I had to think about my con schedule. Uh, Tampa Bay Comic Cons first, then in July I will be at San Diego with more cosplay stuff I'm going to be working on, and I will be in the art show at San Diego. I have three hey, panels Debbie. and plenty of Doctor Who and Star Wars and all that kind of fun stuff. Art. I want somebody to take a screenshot of it now because I like the way that Ten is looking at Tom in our picture. <laughs> They're both looking at it. Oh, nine. You said ten. I'm like, oh, nine, nine, nine. Sorry, nine. Oh, yeah. He's looking at Tom. Nine and uh, Harriet are looking at... Yeah, exactly. There. Yeah, that looks there. Cute. Beautiful. Uh, don't forget also twitch.tv uh, slash Mackenzie Flores, also the Right of Wands, and the... Uh, I almost said the Hitchhiker's Guide. The Binge Watcher's <laughs> Guide. That too. The Binge Watcher's Guide to 42. Doctor Who. And uh, Dave Chapman over at the ratholeca and of course Nick Smith over at Comic Mass. Check him out over there. Thank you all for joining us. Don't forget to say goodbye on your way out. Uh, please stay safe. If, if unless anything changes next week, we will be reviewing Dalek. I really wanted to read that. Hey Debbie, no, you're fine. Uh, <laughs> the episode's over, but hey, you can always watch us uh, stream on the YouTube channel. Oh yeah, right. sure, man. Oh, yeah. Bunk cakes, she's typos all are all real tonight. <laughs> Other than I'm pouring over a bun cake. That's I fine. You that okay. You know, I haven't had dinner tonight, so let me go ahead and end the show so we can have <laughs> proper dinner. Yeah, I got another show to get to, so. <laughs> no worries. All right. Oh, no. Never not old.
Todd, what is that? See, that's when a joke keeps hitting over and over and over again, and it's absolutely hilarious. That's a version of that. Exactly. Okay. Tony, take us out. Thank you all. Please stay safe. Don't forget to say goodbye on the way out. Thank you for joining us, and we'll catch you next week. Become part of the legend. Thank you.